So welcome everybody at our live webinar, Making Money from Smartphone Photos. That's actually the second webinar we are doing from mystockphoto.org. My name is Amos Struck. I'm the owner and author at mystockphoto.org. I'm very happy to have you with us. Um, we are very excited to have more than 250 registrations for the webinar and already uh, almost over 70 people joining us and more are coming in while I speak. If you don't know me, I'm uh, in the stock photo industry since a, about a decade. I'm writing about the stock photo and microstock industry. I'm also the creator and host of the Microstock Expo conference, the only conference in our industry. And I'm also doing several other websites like stockphotosecrets.com and some German ones as well. Um, I also would like to introduce Morgan David Delossi, the head of mobile at Fotolia. We actually met at the Fotokina already. And it was uh, a very nice interview, which you can um, look up afterwards on YouTube, uh, where we talked about the race of the smartphone photography. And uh, that was the reason why we decided to do an another webinar uh, together. Just a quick introduction to Morgan and his life. Uh, Morgan has been, uh, every, Morgan's life has been about stock photography since his birth. He grew up on a stock photo production. He became a Getty film contributor at age of 18. A Corby's photo contributor at 21. He witnesses the first steps of photo in 2004, and he was awarded Hasselblad Master Finalist in 2009. And he was among the first one who spot the commercial value of smartphone photography, which brings him in to launch Photolia Instant as Photolia's head of mobile. And uh, he really knows one or two things about mobile uh, photography and how to sell pictures and which pictures are selling. So um, welcome, Morgan. Thank you, Amos. Is it, is it my turn now, Amos? Absolutely, yes. I will switch over now to Morgan. Just okay. a quick reminder before we start showing Morgan's screen and then starting the presentation. Um, we will have it quite interactive, so we, you will get some questions asked, which you can just um, answer, and we will try to, uh, Morgan will try to switch uh, his uh, presentation according to your answers. We will also um, remind you to keep your questions until about the mid or end of the webinar. We'll have enough time to answer as many questions as we can. Um, it will be open then for you and just then you please just enter your questions. Uh, one thing about the giveaway, we are giving away three private um, three private portfolio reviews with Morgan um, where he will show you uh, what to shoot, how to shoot, which pictures are selling and uh, it will be also featured on the Fotolia blog or, and on mystockphoto.org. We'll pick the winners after the webinar because, and I also reminded you about that in the emails, um, please be ready to post uh, your online portfolio with your mobile photos at the end of the webinar. I will tell you when it's ready and we'll pick the best one for the portfolio reviews and then pick three of you. And it's a, it's a pretty awesome chance to have like a private session with Morgan about it. The, re the replay of the webinar will be available, um, I think tomorrow as soon as we can have it uploaded and you will be reminded where to watch the replay. But I urgently uh, advise to stay in the webinar. We'll have enough time to answer your questions. You have have the chance to win the private portfolio review and there will be some some very nice interesting thoughts and also some live sessions with uh, Morgan on his mobile phone so please uh, stay tuned with us we are now switch to Morgan and um, we'll just hope everything works fine let me just switch to Morgan Here you go Morgan yeah go Thank you, Amos, for this great introduction, and thank you for the kind words about me. Do you see my screen, Amos? Yes. Perfect. So, as Amos said, we expected, I expected, kind of 50 people to sign up, but this happened after only one hour, and so then Amos agreed to more seats, and we are now about 250 people. And not any kind of people. Among you, we have, thank you, Amos, for the information, top Microsoft contributors, renowned bloggers, and most of our competitors, from the small dynamic startups trying to enter mobile photography to existing majors. So 
with this knowledge, I'd like to start with a small word for our uh, competitors. It's very cool you joined in. Because mobile photography sales are having a tremendous growth this last, this last month. And it is our common opportunity to fuel this market with great mobile generated, generated content. So it keeps growing. Buyers are in demand now. Let's not disappoint them. As we'll see in a minute, there's a, there is way more than enough amazing content produced every day. The real issues we have to face is bringing this content to market with great indexation and with full legal requirements. In short, we need to educate people, promote mobile stock photography, and give them keys to turn their beautiful images in a product that we can sell so we can all make money. Okay, this said, let's get to work. Figures. In just one year, mobile photography has seen its reputation transcend from noisy smart snapshots smartphones associated primar primarily to social media up to stock industry grade images. At Photolia, we started last year with only 5,000 images in our mobile collection, and we now have 90,000 finely curated beautiful pictures. The growth doesn't look like slowing anytime soon. But to get a better understanding of what's coming at us, let's start with a few figures. As you can see on my screen now, in 2015, there will be 3 billion smart smartphones sold. There are now, since October, more smartphones on Earth, smart mobile devices, tablets, and smartphones, there are more than humans. Every day, no, these are uh, last month's figures, every day you have 1.8 billion pictures uploaded and shared on social media. It's been estimated that in 2015, there will be 10 trillion pictures taken. 10 trillions is such a big amount that we have to break it down to understand what it means. First, a funny figure, if you printed 10 trillion pictures and put them flat, stack them over each other, you could go up to up and back to the moon five times. It's, at uh, first I expected a figure like, I wanted to say something fun like, it's going to be up the height of the Empire State Building, but the real figure is around three million kilometers. 10 trillion pictures also means that if only, imagine, only one image in 10 million was amazing, at the end of the year, we'll have a million amazing pictures to bring to market. So our challenge for 2015 now is to get these million pictures on market. Amos will now ask you to answer a poll question. These questions are shared, uh, the answers, will be shared to everybody, but when you answer, it's anonymous. At least we will have a general poll and general question. Amos, you can launch it now. I don't know if people see it. Yeah, it's starting Amos, now. Amos, keep me posted when... Yep. Wonderful. So if you can just answer the question, we'll share this question with you. I'm sorry, if you hear a pinging sound, I will try to disable it as well. It's kind of a weird thing from GoToWebinar. It's if somebody it's joining. People joining in? Yes. I don't find the option to turn it off. To everybody who joined since the beginning, thank you for joining. Awesome. Okay, let me just show the results. And the results are pretty amazing. 44% um, are earning less than $350 per month. 29 are earning more than $350 a month. And uh, are you a stock photographer? No, are answered by 27%. Let's just continue, if you like, Morgan. It's a huge amount. Thank you, Amos. OK, next screen. These are the best-selling mobile pictures of Photolia last year. We sold over 60,000 smartphone images last year. And we've had 
some huge brands among our customers. I can't give names, but they include major airliners, the biggest online retailers, um, multi multinational imaging and photography companies, leading tablets companies, etc. All our customers have something in common. They needed to reach out for the younger generation. And in order to do so, they are smart. They are using this generation's own iconography. This is what we have. Mobile photography is the race of a new iconography. And what's best to reach this generation than to use their own content to catch their eye? So it's a perfect circle. This generation generates the very content that will be used on advertisement aimed at them. It's perfect. So what sold last year and what can we deduct from that? Just by looking at what you see on the screen, you could say, oh, it's color, energy, people, sunshine. But we'd be wrong. These concepts are nothing new to stock photography. In fact, what makes a bestseller as bestseller as mobile photography is a combination of two factors. That does the magic. The first one is authenticity. What you see here, and what I've seen selling, is real spontaneous moment, real people, real light, real moments. The second factor is keywording. As Robert Neschke had it in a blog post last month about our bestsellers, he, had, he went through and he checked a few things. All of these bestsellers share the fact that their keywording is perfect. And what makes a perfect keywording into an image is to have a few conceptual words, you know, success, happiness, childhood, and then representative, the sea, the, uh, the person, the age, st stuff like that. Why is it so important? Because in a year where 10 trillion pictures will be shot, the only way for a buyer to find your image will be through the perfect indexation, the perfect keywording. So when you keyword, look at your image and think what would a buyer write as a keyword to find that precise image. A guy that has this image in his head, what are the first few keywords he, he writes down? And these are the very first keywords. It says that must be the keywords that are on top in your list. And don't write too many keywords. 10, 20 keywords. These are what all these bestsellers share. Um, Amos, it's time for your next poll question. Awesome. Yes, I also get rid of the plinging sound. I'm sorry for that. I uh, disable it now. Okay, mm -hmm. so the next one is coming now. And uh, please don't put your answers in the question. Just uh, click the answers in the poll. If you already submitted smartphone photos in stock is the question. And the possible answers are yes, also through the Fotolia Instant app. Yes, but none through the Fotolia Instant app yet or no. I personally have used the Fotolia Instant app as well as some others, but I've had one of the most success with the Fotolia Instant app. Thank you, Amos. And it's not an advertisement, because I'm just honest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will not get paid for it. it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a lot telling no. I'll just show the results in a second. This is very interesting as well. And I've used almost all of the apps. Um, I've had some success with the others, but the most successful with Fotolia. Awesome. 86% have answered the poll. Just waiting a couple of seconds more. Perfect. Thank you very much. Let me just close that down. And let me show you the results. The results are pretty interesting. Uh, have you already submitted smartphone photos in stock? And the answer, no. 45% answered no. 33% yes through the Fotolia app and 23 yes but not through the Fotolia app yet it's nice so a lot of potential contributors thank you so much Amos so what should you shoot in 2015 to make money with your smartphone well obviously authenticity is what the market has been waiting for years it's what all the agencies' photo briefs have been asking us for years, but it's what contributors could never achieve perfectly. First, 
authenticity is a weird concept. When at Corbis they first asked us to do authenticity, we suddenly all came back with uglier models. Um, what we have to grasp is that authenticity is not a concept that you can produce. It has to be the real thing. Um, just because whenever you get your DSLR in front of someone, most of the magic of the magic's gone. In my own experience with a DSLR, either my wife phones and tells me I promised uh, there would be holidays for once, uh, or my daughter starts acting like um, it's a Hollywood big production. So neither of these are authenticity. A smartphone happens to be exactly the needed tool for production to, for, to, to produce the content customers wants, have been wanting all these years. Do not take me wrong here. Pro photographers with DSLRs can of course produce this needed content with pro actors who know more than just making a, a good smile to the, to the camera. And with great lightning knowledge, a photographer can also replicate real light. But the simple truth is that it's damn hard. Reproducing reality on the level asked, on that level asks for amazing skills from the whole team together. Now that the market is ripe, the content you see here, it's time to shoot it and to push it with your smartphone. It's time to shoot spontaneity. It's time to shoot fun and real life and creativity. And how do you get that? It's by shooting all the time. Shooting is free. You should shoot more and more and more than sleep on it. And the next morning, erase 90% of it. Because half the talent of a photographer resides in its selections. It's in, sorry guys, resides in its selection skills. And nowadays, it's more true than ever with the content we're producing. Last year's surprise in bestsellers are selfies. We did not see that coming, but in fact, it was obvious. Selfies was the word of the year of 2014. So there have been a lot of articles and lots of people are talking about it. It's a new trend. But the second surprise is the selfies that sold were not smartphone selfies. This Morgan. one that you see here has been shot with a, a Canon 5D. Yes? I need to interrupt you. Some people are only seeing yes, the honest. voting uh, screen at the moment. I'm very sorry. Um, they don't see my screen. They don't see the... Um, we just need to interrupt. I have tested it and uh, it's working fine for me. Uh, is anybody experiencing the same problem? Are you still seeing the green voting um, holding screen? So you don't see the selfie screen? Okay, so almost everybody is now on the same pace um, and you will also be able to see uh, the presentation later on. Okay. You see the well, did most screen. people see? Did, did most people see the bestsellers and uh, what's to shoot next year? Let's just uh, quickly jump back to it, so everybody can follow okay. along. I jump back. So what you see now on the screen, guys, is uh, what's sold best last year. Let's, on Insta. Yeah, let's uh, four to shoot in 2015. That's I think the one which uh, some have missed. Okay. Oh, yes, okay. exactly this one. So here you are. Spontaneity, fun, real life, and creativity. Awesome. This is the kind of stuff that sells very well in the last two months. So this is the trend we have for 2015. This one big thing to remember right now is that things are moving so fast that the main trend is change. So when I say this is the main trend for 2015, remember all you need to do is shoot, shoot more and upload. You'll see the trends evolving fast. So back to this selfie stuff. Why did only DSLR selfies sold last year? It's because the front camera of your smartphone is crap. If you want to produce best-selling selfies with your smartphone, you have to flip your smartphone and use the main camera, which is amazing. And to bring us to this amazingness, Amos has another question for you. Okay, let me just shoot it at you. The question is, when was the last time you printed a picture larger than A4? Oh gosh, I can't remember. Um, 
Please answer within the last 12 months, over a year ago or never. And if you still experience any problems after we close that vote um, and still see the vote holding slide, please just quickly paste that into the question form. Just pick the one you'd like to pick. Awesome. It's it's great to see so many people answering the questions. And uh, because we all share this data with you as well, you'll see the answer in a second. We'll just close it now. And the answer is, uh, when was the last time you printed a picture large in A4? Within the tw last 12 months, 35% over one year ago, 42% or never, 23%. So this will bring us to the facts. Does everybody see my screen again? Amos? Yes, I see the vote. Good. Eight million pixels. When you print an A4 pic picture with 300 dpi, so the best usual amazing quality of a photo print, it's eight million pixels. Just so you understand, your big fat screen of full HD TV displays only 2 million pixels. 8 million pixels is what's coming next, is a 4K UHD TV that nobody's going to get before a long while, but at least you won't get content for it because a Blu-ray, the high end, is HD, so it's only 2 million pixels. And the other figures, so you grasp exactly what it means is a magazine is 8 million pixels but also a big billboard. Why are big billboards on the road only 8 million pixels is because nobody comes to look close but if you once go very close to one of these you can see that the printing dots are just huge. So what does that mean? It, it means that you don't need actually more pixels to get pictures to sell, but what you need is better pixels, big fat pixels, I like the word fat here, that will have a chance, that will have a, a chance to be hit by a photon. Because that is one limitation in photography that will never overcome. It's the physical size of a photon. You need this one to hit one of your pixels. If you have to choose between two cameras in the same price range, chances are that the one with less pixels has a better image quality because he will have for the same actual size of CCD, he will have bigger pixels. So a be better chance to have a better image quality, better colors, less noise. And that's it. When you have too many pixels on a small sensor, you start creating noise if you don't have a photon hitting them. So for, according to me, the pixel count race is done, even if we, with the last Canon. Now it's a pixel size race. Check it in your camera specs before buying it. Go for the size that is written with UM behind. You need big pixels. You have a better chance to catch photons, better light, less noise. That's it. That's it. About image quality and pixel quality, I wanted to make something else clear here. I've made a small test. I've put a Nikon D3, a Fuji X100, and an iPhone 6 in full auto settings. And I put a spot on the ground, threw a few objects and had a picture. Here you can see the 100% crop of each picture. The iPhone 6 needed to be a little bit blown up to fit with the 12 million pixels of the two others. But as you can see, you cannot see a real difference in image quality. Is the difference that you can see here worth the size, weight, and price of the other dev devices? If you're not a photographer, according to me, certainly not. And if you are a photographer, at least you won't feel guilty next time you forget your camera and get the magic lights and moment during the weekend with your friends. You just take your smartphone out of it and make a beautiful picture. I need to put a disclaimer on this. Of course, DSLRs are better. I can already imagine all the pros there screaming. Um, DSLRs are way better quality tools for the needs of pro for professional photographers. 
what I'm saying here is if you're on a beach and see something beautiful and that you shoot it with your smartphone, it is a useful picture. It works. It's the, the quality in very good light has no difference. So don't worry using your smartphone and don't worry with the image quality. Send us the image. We'll sell it. Here we go for the next poll question. I'm sorry for the poll questions. I didn't expect them to be that often. Hey, what model of smartphone have you got? And uh, we have some options here. iPhone 4S or above, like 5S, 6. Android, Windows, other or none. Yes, there are people out there which have none, don't use smartphones. Already 2% are not using any smartphone. I see there's a lot of iPhone, iPhone photographers here, me as well. Hey, Jack. Interesting. Okay, let's just close the poll and just show you the results. These are interesting results. What model of smartphone have you got? 64% um, are shooting with the iPhone 4S or above model. Android 19%. Yeah, Windows Phone 3. Oh, I didn't expect, expect to have that many Windows Phone here. Uh, Others 12% or none 3%. Wow. Very interesting data. What do you think, Morgan? Very interesting results. Um, I was wondering, since we are creative people, maybe we are more open to Apple, <laughs> a brand, to brand like Apple uh, for yeah. historic uh, reasons. But it's good to know. I'm very happy for the Microsoft phone guys. It means you have an amazing smartphone uh, camera on your smartphone. Sadly, you have a Windows OS right now, but I hear they're working great um, for, for the future. Um, but here are the results why it's very good news for all of you. iPhones are, according to DxO Mark mobile photo scores, the best camera you can have on a smartphone. And with only 8 million pixels, so this even comes back to what we said earlier, they have put bigger pixels in their, uh, in their iPhone. That's why they could only put 8 million pixels in it. The other ones are still very good. And see, the Nokia, the, the, the Windows phone, is uh, although it's a little bit uh, older than the rest, it's still in the top five. And that's quite amazing. I was disappointed by the Samsung S5. I thought it was really an amazing camera. But in fact, it only has uh, only. It's uh, it comes number five among this list. But they have the Samsung S6 coming soon, and this is good news. Uh, here are two quotes on the side that I like. That uh, I'm loving this new breed of smaller, super convenient image quality prime lens compact cameras that we can make fun for with. This is a quote from Dean Holland, and I couldn't agree more. And then the, the disclaimer again. If the only thing you are focused on is technical image quality, then buy a DSLR. I don't want to create a riot between pro photographers with DSLRs uh, versus uh, smartphone photographers. So here we come to the tips and tricks. Um, this might be the most important part of the webinar uh, for the future. Uh, what you have to do to make money with your smartphone. You have to shoot people and lifestyle. This is and will always be the best seller because it's harder to shoot. Everybody can shoot a uh, flower, it's dog or food, but it's really hard to shoot people and lifestyle. So there are fewer of yours and uh, buyers are looking for these more. So it's a win-win. Just one thing, Morgan. Uh, um, shoot outside in full daylight. Your smartphone. Yes. Uh, just one thing. Just um, I want to just uh, raise the question. Uh, what's lifestyle? Um, some people might not know that term. Um, lifestyle is, um, how could I define this? It's uh, content that uh, describes things that happen to people. Lifestyle is your family on the beach. It's uh, your friend drinking a coffee. It's, um, it's uh, you at work. It's... Um, all this stuff. It's uh, that's that's a category we we named lifestyle. Awesome. Yeah, Anything that's that happens. Perfect. Good? Thank you. Okay. 
Shoot outside in full daylight, it's very important. Your smartphones are not fit to shoot in low light. They will create a lot of grain. That might also be the reason why smartphone photography sells well, because we only accept pictures that have amazing light, so we accept better, more amazing pictures. Shoot all the time, it's free. I already went through this, but it's really a very important rule. You will also learn more by shooting all the time. Have fun, you will sell more, and this is over true, because when you have fun, you tend to shoot better, passionate things, and uh, it feels, it can feel in the picture. Uh, take advantage of the size of your device. It has, it's a very small device, but with a huge screen, so you can discover new angles that you could never do before, and very fast, and it's always in your pocket, so you never miss anything. So really take advantage of that. And then take control of the exposure but leave the autofocus do its job by itself. It's, it, autofocus very often knows its job better than you. To take care of the exposure yourself, every device has its own way of doing it. Um, I would tell you to always use your device native camera app because it's made for your device hardware and it's very important. And then the dance. Please do not submit pictures of your cat. The internet is already full of pictures with cats and buyers don't really need pictures with cats. And it also goes for dogs, for food, for flowers or for buildings. We don't really need these. They don't sell and uh, they're already full of, for free on the internet. Do not shoot inside, I've gone through this. Do not over filter your images. Don't use apps that overfilter your images without letting you slide it down. Uh, I saw that Instagram now has um, a way to filter down, uh, to, to less overfilter your images. It's very good. Please do not overfilter your images because the quality then is crap for the buyers. Do not crop your pictures more than a square. I would say do not crop your pictures at all because you don't have a lot of pixels and they are worth gold. Avoid mode most gadgets. Anytime you put something in front of your lens, you're damaging your image quality. Never ever touch the lens unless it's to clean it. It's a very small lens. The smallest thing that you put on it will damage your image quality definitely. And here we go for another poll question, Amos. Awesome, let me just shoot it at you. We are almost over the questions. Uh, thank you very much for your participation. Just uh, open it. How often do you share pics on social media is the actual poll question. I share mine not so often, to be honest. Uh, I, I tend to share one or two a week. Yeah, I shared yours from today's setup for the webinar. I really liked it. Okay, the most common... It depends, of course. When I'm on holiday, I share a lot. And you sell them as well, I saw that. So let's just close down the poll. Last answers, please. And Morgan, we have about seven to 10 more minutes, okay? Yeah. Okay, okay, I'll do, I'll do fast. How often do we share your pictures? And then we have the results here, never 40%. And that's uh, a couple per month, a couple per week. It's about equal. And then one to five a day. Wow, I don't want to follow you. That's awesome. Um, Plus five a day, five percent. Interesting poll answers. I'll switch over to. Here we go for the live demo. Do you see my screen, Amos? Yes, and yes, I also see. Do you see the screen of my smartphone? Yes, that's a live demo, everybody. So we'll just looking wow. what apps it's he has working, installed. So yep. Be happy. So here are the apps I use the most. Uh, to shoot, to post prod, to share, and to monetize my pictures. First, the um, camera app. I tend to use the native camera app because it gives you the most raw possible image. And I would tell you to do this. Only use a third-party camera app when you really need it. For example, uh, this is a very exciting new trend that's happening. Um, Image quality is now getting better, not by hardware, but by software. I found this uh, Hydra app the other day. Um, and with software, uh, they're now enhancing uh, image quality um, 
by shooting several pictures. So this will only work for still life, as you see. But imagine here, I do a picture. It takes 40 images. If I'm not messing up too much. I'm messing up some too much copy. Yeah, it should be good. Right, be good. And it puts all these images together and it gives you a 32 million pixels image. Amazingly sharp. As you can see here, it's the pixels of my screen. Uh, just shot with an 8 million pixel smartphone. So that's something that you get can be used outside of regular um, camera apps. Uh, for post-production, I tend to use Snapseed a lot. This is a personal choice. Um, on uh, tablets, I saw that they were using, um, the other day I uh, played with uh, Photoshop and uh, the Wacom Pen, and I was amazed by the power of this small app. Um, I say this in truth, it was uh, stunning. They have small uh, uh, workshops for you to train, uh, and I highly recommend you just to test it. Uh, and you will start, uh, I changed my mind about where post-production was going, even at the professional level. I really believe that uh, uh, Wacom and also Adobe and other tablet makers or software makers will bring professional post-production to tablets very soon. Uh, to share my pictures, um, I use Instagram and to uh, monetize them. Of course, I mostly use uh, Photolia Instant. Uh, not only is this a small advertisement, but also is because um, I think we have the best mix between uh, the startup uh, flexibility and uh, a lot of customers. Um, now, Amos, do we have the time to make a Snapseed demo and then an Instant demo? Absolutely, yes. I would love to see how you uh, do the Snapseed editing with your pictures. I okay, use Snapseed so myself. Fast uh, Snapseed editing. Yeah, take your time. Um, okay, here. So this is no advertisement. I don't know these guys, but I just love to use this. Um, so, for example, this is a picture I took last summer a friend of mine in the mountains. Uh, what I do is I, I like the drama filter a lot. I tame it down. You see, you can slide and tame it down a little bit. And then I resaturate a little. Um, I validate this. Then you can always see the before, after. I don't know if you see the before, after. Yes. And what I tend to do is play with the tilt and shift. They have an Excellent tilt and shift feature, but um, the Aviary app also has a uh, much more uh, personalizable uh, feature, uh, customizable feature of uh, of blurring and of tilt and shift. So I validate this. Now here you can see the before. Oh, here, so that's before, and this is after. We got some uh, shallow depth of field. We've got more uh, sky. Uh, I just think it's lovely. It made a bestseller uh, out of that picture on instant. And now a very fast uh, instant demo. So uh, the idea with um, the instant app was to make it uh, a tool to upload pictures into stock. It's not something else. So even here, the, the camera is cool, but the, its main purpose is to help you upload pictures in this, into stock as fast as possible. So here, let me grab a picture. So you get a picture. You can add a model release. So it'll appear. OK. You can see all the model releases you have on, uh, on Photolia or create a new one. Two, you can add keywords. So let me fast add some keywords that I already had. So you can go take keywords that already exist, that you've already placed, or you can add a few new ones here. Let me add a fake one. Then add a title, uh, top of the mountain. Done. Um, after that, what I like to do is check.
order you know it's very important that the most uh, agencies here we go this was for the live demo I must go for the next screen and now some deeper thoughts to end this webinar my deeper thoughts are called El Dorado what started as a fun experiment last year has become confirmed as a fast-growing trend We've sold over 60K mobile images, as I, said, as I told many times, from a photo in some collection this year. But with that figure, we've just proved the concept. The real steps will come this year, in 2015. Remember in 2006, when a few pro stock photo photographers finally embraced micro stock photography. They started respecting it, bringing their pro knowledge and adapting it to this specific market. And it was an Eldorado, a gold rush that these early adopters had well deserved. I believe we are at this very stage with mobile photography. It's now a very new way to consume imagery. We consume way more imagery. Customers have, ne have never used so much imagery refreshing non-stop their campaigns and using more and more visual per campaign. I'm not looking for everybody to start uploading mobile stock photography. I'm looking for the right motivated mobile photographers to grasp this new Eldorado. What we need is into this, what kind of contributor we need is the one shooting what sells, so looking at the trends. We need them to have some legal and copyright knowledge. We're happy to provide it. And we're looking for people who are using keywords that customers actually search for. And we're also happy to share these. So that's it. I hope this inspired you and give you more knowledge to upload better, more smartphone photography and make money with it. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much, Morgan. And thank you, everybody, for uh, staying with us. Um, Do you for want the... one more poll question, or shall we? Yeah, we have this one, one more. Let me just shoot it at you. Um, it's what keeps you the most from uploading more images to stock websites? Having to ask people to sign model release forms, or the fastidious upload process, or privacy issues. I tend to have problem with the model releases, but I now have stored them in Fotoria and just pick them in the app. But That's the last poll, guys. <laughs> Thanks for answering it. And we'll share the results within a few couple of more seconds. And then we move over to the Q&A session, uh, something I'm really looking forward to. So have your questions ready to be shooted at us. So just for info, I grew up with pictures of me on uh, every main stock photo website. And they're still there. Um, the for people who are afraid of privacy issues um know that it didn't damage my youth <laughs> it's interesting and quite, even quite all right in fact <laughs> so here are the results i have to ask people to sign model release forms uh 74 percent just uh, give me a quick answer on this mm -hmm. um, is there a trick to get people to sign a model release form morgan I used to walk in the streets uh, and ask people to sign model releases. Uh, it's very hard the first time, but you will see that people, in fact, love getting the attention. I, I made productions uh, across the United States with um, $10 bills. Uh, I went to people, asked them if they, if they could take a picture and, uh, and uh, sign a model release, and they always say yes. Uh, pride is going over any other issue when you ask them. Awesome. And always ask model release before you make a picture. Yeah, that's an interesting tip. I was thinking I would shoot, shoot the picture first and then ask uh, for the model release. Mm, then they feel like you have uh, violated them in a way. I, okay. I really recommend first telling them that you know they look very good. You want to spend time taking a picture of them and, and uh, please sign this model release. They will see that you're serious. Awesome. Yeah, that's a great tip. Um, and I can sign the model release within the Fotolia app? 
in the Fotolia app, you have model reels that you can after that use everywhere. We you can even download a PDF and it syncs with all your um, Fotolia back uh, uh, website. So after, for example, you can do a full production. Uh, DSLR production, but get the model release signed digitally, and they will sync on your website when you upload them in Photolia. Awesome. Um, I've now moved uh, back to my screen. You should see the Q&A session. Is everybody seeing that? We, because we start that now. Um, so everybody be ready to paste your or post your question in the form there. Yeah. Morgan, do you see my screen as well with the Q&A session on it? I do not. I will be lovely surprised with your questions, Amos. Okay, let me just uh, shoot some of them of you. So you tell me the questions. I tell them. I ask the questions to Morgan, and he will try to answer as many as he can. Which language to use for keywording when I use instant in Italy? I always recommend when you can and when you have the knowledge to upload your keywords in English. Okay. English is the most common language used for uh, every translator in any image banks. It's the main one. But if not, use your uh, mother tongue uh, because this is the other one yet mm -hmm. you really masters. Okay. Is there a trend for squared image? Uh, George is asking this. No, we thought about it, and uh, in fact, it's not a trend. Uh, people just are looking for amazing moods, and then they will crop it themselves if needed. Awesome. And another question from Jack Hollingsworth. Hi, Jack. Uh, perfect to have you with us. Very well known iPhoneographer. <laughs> do you use the Fotolia release in Instant App or do you use another app like Easy Release for the model releases? Hi, Jack. I'm very happy to have you join. For those who, doesn't know, who don't know Jack, he's kind of the uh, father of mobile photography. He was there way before me. Um, I always use uh, the instant app for it, but I know there are a lot of very good uh, uh, digital model release apps where you could uh, create mobile model releases that will work for any image bank. It's quite mm. important. Exactly. I use easy release as well. Um, okay, let me just pick another one. Uh, one silly question he said, <laughs> there's there are no silly questions. Uh, is it okay to upload photos that were taken with DSLRs via the smartphone app into the instant collection? And does the photos to be uploaded on the instant collection necessarily have to be taken by a smartphone from Jomi? There's a twist. There's a twist. We will be tougher on DSLR pictures. They will have to have the mood that we are looking for. In fact, what we're creating with the instant collection is a specific mood so customers don't waste time. We want them to arrive there and find exactly what they need. So if you are able to shoot that kind of stuff with your DSLR, yes, it is always accepted. But if you're just sending uh, landscapes or food shot with DSLRs, they will be rejected most of the time. Okay, and everybody just stay here. If you'd like to have your questions, questions answered, I will go through them, just shoot them at me, just put them there. Um, because we have some awesome one coming up. Jack is asking again, how many photographers do you have in the Fotulia Instant Collection? If you can answer that. How many photographers? Oh, I don't know. The, the contributors are, figures are mixed with all contributors in Fotulia, so I don't have an exact figure for that. Okay. Do I need to have an identity card for the model release? Uh, the end, you, you mean putting your uh, identity card on it? Yes. Is that the question, Amos? Yeah. It's optional. Uh, in fact, model releases, you have to know, is the photographer's responsibility. Uh, agencies ask you to upload model releases so they can make sure that they won't get into trouble. But at the end, if there is trouble, it always comes back to the photographer. So if you are not sure of the guy who signs you your model release, Add, ask for his ID, make a picture of his ID. It will be useful. But in the end, uh, what we really want is people to uh, to do model release for themselves. That's why we force them to do it. But it's because it's for their own safety in the end. It's uh, for everybody's uh, better use. Mm -hmm. Another question, uh, which is kind of a, we already have kind of answered, but uh, can I mix up uh, my native language and the English language in the keywords, or should I 
use either one of them? No. <clears throat> you should always, um, so when you're keywording, you can mention, you have to mention in what language you are keywording, and it's very important to do it, otherwise uh, the computer the, will not understand what's happening. So when you're using, when you're keywording in English, you have to notify the app that you are keywording in English. There's a small uh, selection thing. Um, if you're keywording in French and you tell him it's English, um, it will not understand what you say and it will badly translate this into the search engine and your image will be lost okay. somewhere into so, the whole billion images. Okay, Bill is asking, uh, Bill, where are the crackers, by the way? Any tips for shooting candid photos such as the devices? Come again, I didn't get that. Any tips for what should what uh, what device should I use to shoot candid photos? Good ones. What's a candid photo? Uh, very good ones. Um, so, what device are you recommending? Uh, to, to, uh, good um, uh, Hasselblad, medium format, <laughs> 50 million pixels. Okay, but on the mobile ones, uh, iPhone 6, uh, Windows. <laughs> oh, iPhone iPhone is always a safe bet. Okay. The iPhone is a safe bet, and then I, I had the other ones here. Um, you know what? I will give you the list again. iPhones is the best. Sony is very good, the Z3 and the Z2. Then the Nexus 6, then the Nokia 808, and then the Samsung S5. And the S6 that will be launched uh, early March, I would recommend to have a sharp look at it when it comes. I have high expectations for this. Okay, and the three percent of uh, Windows Phone users <laughs> want to know will be their uh, Fotolia instant app for Windows Phone soon from Blake. Not yet. We need more people to to buy uh, Windows phones so we can invest into uh, producing this app. It's uh, quite costly to produce uh, mobile apps, so we need to make sure that we'll have. Um, to, to have enough people uh, using it. So keep buying whenever uh, a hardware device maker makes these amazing cameras, uh, please buy them. Uh, please buy these smartphones. It will help us get your uh, apps to market. Okay. Um, do you think mobile devices will be good also for stock videos? Yes, I believe this. The only problem is uh, videos are very heavy and uploading them through an app will fail often. So um, just because most people will, be, will not be on Wi-Fi and so it will bring more problems than solutions. So uh, I know everybody is looking into it. Uh, it might be a big thing whenever the broadband gets better. Okay. Um, can someone really live from doing stock photography? I've heard this question very often. <laughs> uh, yes, I know people who do more than living on, mob on stock photography. Uh, I live with people who live only on stock photography. I have lived very well on it stock photography and um, so yes but you have to be dedicated to you it's like everything if you want to be successful read the data read your statistics have good keywords shoot what sells shoot what sells and shoot what sells okay um, which will be the role of Adobe in supporting the instant collection sadly I'm not allowed yet to say anything about Adobe so uh, I, uh, if you have more questions about Adobe, I think you you will have to wait a few more months. Okay. Um, Giuliano is asking, um, do you need property release for uploading to Fotolia? When you're shooting a property that people can recognize and that it's not anything on the public street, you will need a property release. So it's a yes. Um, whenever you can see and recognize uh, private property. Mm -hmm. The million dollar question, um, why do customers buy mobile stock? And it's a very long one, so please uh, stay with me. Is it because the content is mobile or is it cost? Is it cheaper or convenience to search, browse or download or some combination of above? Why would customers buy mobile pictures over DSLR content? A good one from Jack, by the way. It's very interesting. 
In fact, we don't sell them much cheaper, uh, a few cents, I think, per size. Uh, so they don't even search by price for these. What makes the difference? I think most people who buy or mobile pictures don't even know it's shot with mobile. They just click on an image that has the right mood and, uh, and then they buy it. And what's most interesting is uh, after 60,000 images sold last year, we had no any complaints about image quality. So it, this is really proves the fact that people are looking for a mood and are using this image in the 8 million pixel range. Exactly. And that's also, if you look at the uh, best-selling instant pictures, you see they are all about mood, right? Um, yeah. Is there any keyword generator suggested? Yuri Archers used to have an amazing tool. Uh, maybe we could share this later. I don't know if it's live, still live, but he, it, it was open to everybody and it was amazing. Should I upload a couple of the same motif or should I select the picture? I think that's the best from Dennis. When you're uploading similars, make sure they are what we call sisters and not similars. They should complete each other for when a buyer wants to make a story, uh, well, it might want uh, different angles, but don't upload the same picture with small different twists or moderators are not your, uh, are not art directors. Uh, they will have a tough time finding the, the, the best one. And so they might reject most of them as being uh, similars. Awesome, yeah. Can Morgan explain more about how too many pixels created too much noise on a small image from Alan Jacob? Yes, I will try to make short. So when you try to put too many pixels on a, on a very small sensor, uh, between, in between each pixel you have, um, let's say, electronics that needs to gather the information. All these empty places uh, that are not the pixels but that are, are what's in between um, when a photon or when the, the light ends there it's not used it's not uh, registered so you end up with a lot of pixels that didn't got light that didn't got any photon and so to generate the final image uh, your smartphone will have to imagine the the light to imagine the color to give for these black pixels and that's what looks like noise so it is not uh, good as you could imagine uh, a few uh, camera makers uh, well the Nokia had this feature to bring down four pixels as one whenever in low light and they used to get better at this noise stuff but nobody else in smartphone industry does that awesome so this is the reason a photon is physical. It has to hit your pixel. If you have too many small pixels, it might miss it. And uh, we are quickly going into the end of the uh, Q&A session. Two more questions. Software for post-production, quickly shoot it at us. Come again? The software for post-production you, you recommend. Oh, uh, the software uh, on tablet? Photoshop Touch with no hesitation. It's amazingly powerful. Awesome, and you already saw and nothing it. to do with the fact that, uh, and nothing to do with the fact that uh, Adobe uh, got closer to us. It's a really uh, uh, easy tool to use and quite powerful on small tablets. Perfect. And then there's the question: If you plan to invent missions to shoot like I am, does Alan is asking this? So, uh, do do we plan this? No. Uh, honestly, these kind of missions uh, are not why people come to Fotolia, to stock market. Uh, it's a very small uh, market uh, and uh, putting energy into it is not worth it. Um, we, are, uh, we aim to make the perfect tool for stock photography and uh, we'll leave it there as long as possible. Okay, last question. Should I upload in color or should I, or is it okay to upload in black and white? And then we will go into the um, drawing, into the uh, giveaway. So black and white or color? It's That's an eternal question. I would say 90% of the time upload color because customers can always turn it to black and white. But sometimes your picture is way better, way more appealing black and white. 
shoot it in black and white. You know you're taking a risk to lose all, peop all customers that are looking for color, but for the few ones who are looking for black and white, you'll be in, this, in that niche market. So this is a non answer. Good luck. So everybody, we are now um, collecting your URLs, the links to your online portfolio where you show off your best mobile pictures that can be anything from instant uh, from Fotolia Instant to Fotolia to IM to Instagram um, to Facebook. Any link which can be ex uh, accessed by us without any password should be please now entered into um, the question box. We will save that for later and then we'll get back and draw three of you to have a personal coaching session with Morgan, um, which means Morgan will review your pictures, your portfolio, and then he select the pictures which has the best sales potential. And then he will brief you about the best keywords or how to accompany your pictures um, or to identify what kind is the best selling content. So just shoot um, your links in the questions now. Make sure that we can access them without any passwords or request for acceptance. We'll pick three of you, and we will also, and that's a plus, like we, this is a, that's a bonus. We'll give away not only these three personal co coaching sessions and portfolio reviews, we will also feature them on the Fotolia blog. So your pictures will be shown on the Fotolia blog to thousands of readers, as well as on my blog, mystockphoto.org. I will also show your pictures, the ones which we choose then. And yes, only mobile pictures are allowed, right? We are only talking about mobile. So please send us. It can be even Foab or any other app or any other online portfolio website. Just make sure that you enter this URL and we can access it. Um, still some way to go. Thank you, everybody, for joining this awesome, awesome webinar. We will keep you updated about the replay of the webinar very soon. It was awesome. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't have it better done by Morgan. Morgan, thank you very much. It was very inspiring. Thank you very much, Amos. It was a pleasure. And everybody, um, if you miss out to send your address now, um, you'll get a question after the, I close the webinar. You can still enter the URL or you can still, yeah, not send it to us now. Time is over. Send it now and get a chance to win. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining. And we'll see you in the next webinar on mystockfolder.org. Thanks, Morgan. And we'll see you. Have a nice Sunday, everybody. Bye-bye.